Welcome to the Beyond the Press channel. Today we have a surprise workshop video. We are going to fix giant hydraulic cylinder or it would be like too long video. So in this part we are going to just take it in parts. That was a lot of work. Everything was very very much stuck. And I didn't really have time to make this video, but it was so interesting that uh, I just had to film this. And the credit of most of like real work being done here goes to my dad Timo and our customers mechanic. I was mainly filming, but you're going to like this. <laughs> There's all, all of the good stuff that like good works of projects has. So first smaller parts. Take them off easily, on like minorly stuck bolts. But then there is the like big square shaped block that is holding the cylinder in its place, transferring all the force. And before we can take that out, we had to drain rest of the oil from the cylinder. And with big cylinders, it's quite tricky. There can be like hundred liters of oil in there. So you have to like be sure that it's empty before you pop it open. Otherwise there's like 100 liters of oil on your workshop floor. And that's not optimal. I think there was like 40 liters or something. So not huge amount, but still like a lot if it just spills on the floor. Okay, we are trying to open this. This, not, this is not enough. We have this as a backup plan, but doesn't fit. But now we have Mr. Milwaukee here. <laughs> Milwaukee man. And Tommy brings this to us. So at least it's bigger. So let's see does the size matter. <laughs> uh, turns out that the uh, size probably matters. But this wasn't enough of size. They didn't open with that. It sure made up like bad sound and like a lot of torque. But didn't open. But you're going to see that it, it, it takes quite a lot to open those bolts. Those are like the main stars of this video. Then we tried with the torque converter thing. I think you cannot like use the impact gun on this. I think the internals on this are too flexible. It didn't transfer the impacts. Then we tried sledgehammer. Uh, didn't work. Then, <laughs> then we found this. <laughs> found this from the yard. It was perfect size. <laughs> like in a terms that it fits the key nicely. The, that uses to turn the bolts. And it was quite thick. So it was like really strong. It was stronger than the actual tool. So we weren't able to get the bolts open with this. We only destroyed the tool. But I think this looks funny as hell. <laughs> and Hanna was really scared when filming this. I was also a bit scared when like pulling it down and we are pulling quite hard. It doesn't seem much because it's so thick steel. It's like 10 millimeter wall thickness. So it's really rigid. But we were really using some force here and we were uh, worried that what happens when the like tool snaps and that flies down because it's it's like really heavy. Hey Hanna, how why is, why is that look? That looked very, very bad. It was it, it was very dangerous and oh. Yeah, I think you terrible. haven't been so scared with the press even. Yeah, so just like may, well, uh, maybe a, Almost uh, that scared with uh, water, but uh, yeah. yeah, that was that was bad. Yeah, I think the like the keys. Oh my god! Oh. Uh, we are going to heat those suckers <laughs> up and then try again. So next step is of course to add some heat, and we were like not ready to melt them yet. We wanted to try to open them because it's like much less work if you can just like take them in one part out. And usually if you just heat it up, the bolt stretches, so it's not as tight. And also the like heat usually does something for the stuff that's between the bolt and the like threads. 
And after a lot of like impact can work, they actually started to open, which was really great. And that was quite interesting because they were like really, really hot. And the oil that flies out is really, really hot. So you have to be like careful not to like get that on your skin. And also when like using this amount of heat, you have to be pretty sure that there isn't any large chambers full of air and like oil vapors because that can explode. But with this part, these threads are not connected to the like actual cylinder in, a, in any way. And even if there would be like ignition inside of the cylinder, it's going to hold that just fine because it's like hydraulic cylinder made for like 400 bars. So it's not going to explode, but we were like, those are not connected to that in any way, but it's it's like something to always think about when heating things that have oil in them, that can it explode and how bad it's going to be. But here we thought that it's going to be, or not thought, we know that it's completely safe to heat it up. And also like hydraulic oil is not as bad as like gasoline. The vapor, vapor point is really high. But if you, for example, take empty barrel that has like small amount of hydraulic oil and heat the whole goddamn barrel, then it might explode. So be careful. But yeah, now they were opening. And I think we were a bit lucky with the couple first ones because the next ones were, weren't like open that easily. I'm not sure, is it just luck? Or did the part that is like between the bolts and the like frame, did that heat up so much that the like stretching of the bolts weren't so great compared to like the middle part because that also gets hot and gets wider. But these were really hard to open and we started to just try different things. We tried to add some oil. Of course that was a bit tricky because the <laughs> parts were quite hot. So most of the oil just boils away. But something something get in, inside of there. But uh, still no opening. So I thought that my, maybe it would be a good idea to <laughs> bring in the giant pipe back. And try with that, that and heat. I think this definitely generates more torque than the impact gun. So with the heat and like all the torque in the world should open. And I think I think it would be an also a good idea to uh, put the pipe on the other direction and lift with the crane. Then you wouldn't need to be in line of fire. But didn't open with that. The tool just kept like flexing. And then we realized that when you are like using the impact gun and hammering at the same time. That somehow made a difference. And I'm not sure did it open the bolts or did it like make them... Brush <laughs> 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 or what is this that, that got on fire. Timo were a bit careless with the oxyacetylene torch. So like proper good workshop moment there. Yeah, but I was saying about the hammer. I'm not sure did it, did it loosen the bolts or made the interface between the impact gun key and the bolt better because you can like hit the bolt so hard that it like gets really tight against the tool and then the impacts may be transferred better to the bolt but the hammering that helped and we got a couple more open but it was still really really slow I think it has been like two hours of opening bolts at this point and we have gotten like eight open. So this is really slow, but it would probably be even slower to just like burn them, like cut them and then try to get the stops out. But this, this was the breakthrough moment when we realized that we are going to use the impact gun and giant wrench at the same time. With the giant pipe, of course. Now you can get like huge amount of torque from the wrench. That was actually really good. It didn't slip at all. And then like 
more torque and impacts from the impact gun. And with that, they just started to open. We still need to heat, heat up every bolt. So it wasn't very fast, but at least they were like opening with like reasonable amount of time and effort at this point. And after the bolts were gone, we thought that this is going to take still forever, but the cylinder pipe came out from the frame piece relatively easy. We just like hit with the sledgehammer, then put the keys on between that, and it just started to move. Then I think, did we use grain or what happened here? I don't know. We, we used the hammer as a li leverage, like put the hammer between and twist it. We got it this far. And then the second hero of the day, cheap scissor car jack from Bildema. This was really great tool. <laughs> Just put that there and it had couple tons of force. Or you, you didn't need couple tons, like maybe couple hundred kilos of force. And yeah, now the like frame is sliding nicely, nicely out. And there is like sliders for the <laughs> cylinder rod, like the piston rod, the shaft. So that should slide quite easily, but they're really heavy parts. So of course there's quite much of friction still. So no way you are pulling it with hand or grain or anything like that. And then from the other side, we decide that we want to take the like giant steel block, the frame block out. And then after that, pull the piston out from the cylinder. And the, what are those like things that you use to move pallets? Those were also really handy at here. Then uh, we decided to use the forklift to pull the piston out. So uh, we protected the thread on the end of the piston. Just add short lifting strap there. Take the forklift and pull it out. And it works really nicely. You can like make sure that the piston is coming out straight and you have a lot of force to pull that out. And it didn't need a lot of force when the cylinder was like coming straight out. There's like good sliders there on the cylinder. So it should slide really well. And then just catch the piston with the crane from the other side when it's coming out. And <laughs> I realized that we could use the same just add pressurized air behind the cylinder trick that I used the sm for the smaller cylinders but that would be a really bad idea with this because it would make like giant explosion and throw the like 
The cylinder weighs over two tons and the piston is probably like one ton. So you don't want those like flying around at your workshop. So we didn't, didn't, didn't use the pressurized air trick. Yeah, but now it's open. Uh, there wasn't like super bad damage. The piston seals are broken and then there's like minor scratches on some of the parts. But nothing super bad. Uh, I'm not sure how much we are going to cover about the repair work on the future videos. I think I might do like assembly video. Depends how this goes, it takes quite a lot of my time to film this. Because it's like a lot of work and you have to be like filming all the time. But I try to make room on my calendar for this. We have been quite busy, you don't see it yet on the videos. but. That's because we are filming explosion videos now in summer and releasing them on the winter. We have made like eight really good explosion videos. You have seen some of the teasers on community tab. And we have like really, really good stuff that we are going to film still on this month. And maybe after a couple months, the explosion videos start to come out. But, uh, I try to keep some works, workshop stuff also coming and on Hydraulic Press channel if you haven't been following lately I'm focusing more on technical stuff also there now for the rest of the year I usually take the summers off from like really uh, demanding videos because not many people are watching so I don't want to like burn myself for nothing I want to like release good stuff when people have time to watch them so that's now from this point for end of the year and i think that is about that thank you for watching and have a nice day